share screen here we go hello class today Carla, Jada, Christian, and myself will be presenting to you what traditional literature is where we will talk about its main characteristics to start off this presentation we will we will cite a little definition for you As it says in the definition, it is an ancient and unique type of genre that started in the oral tradition, which has multicultural origins, in parentheses, folklore. Folklore is basically similar to traditional literature, or it can be compared to it. These two definitions or these two terms are very alike. So this is why folklore is related to this. And to start off with in diving in more deeper into this presentation, we will start with its history. The first point, it says that folklore is passed on from generation to generation, and it's ever-changing. This means that these stories, these tales, will always be changing from generation to generation because usually people adapt it to what they want or what the story needs for, you know, in their opinions. And because of this, its origins have been lost, which is the second point. No one knows how the original story was intended to, to end. And this is a important quote that I thought would be very fitting for this part of the presentation. It says, no minstrel ever follows exactly the songs that have come down to him from the time before. Always he adds and leaves out and embroiders and puts something of himself into each retelling. Like I said, the origins have always been lost and this is the exact definition where people add or take away some elements. Now diving in into a timeline, these are the most important uh, traits that this folklore has. In the 1400s, it's when the, invent the invention of the printing press was made, where either way, oral tradition was very predominant. Then in 1697, Charles Perrault created stories or tales from past times with morals. This was the first registration of the Sleeping Beauty, Little Red Riding Hood, and Cinderella, as some examples. Then in 1704, Antoine Galland recollected the airy Arabian Nights, or tales told by, I don't know how to say that name, so I'm not going <laughs> to offend it, which were stories from Asian and North, North Africa. Then, in 1812, the famous Grimm Brothers released Nursery and Household Tales, which we all know are stories related to Hansel and Gretel, Rumpelstiltskin, and Snow White. Those are some of the classics. Then, in 1841, Peter Absorption, I butchered that name. Jorgen Moe created Norwegian folktales, which were dedicated to the Norway part of the world. Then in 1801, Joel Chandler Chandler Harris released Uncle Remus, his songs and sayings, which was folktales related to the United States and the black community. Then in 1896, Joseph Jacobs created English fairy tales, which was very dedicated to the Three Little Pigs, Henry Penny, and Jack and the Beanstalk. This is the main timeline that this type of literature has. Next, we will talk about the characteristics. These are some of the most common characteristics. Unknown authorship, like I said, these types of literature have lost their origins. Then conventional introduction and conclusions, which are the phrases once upon a time, and they lived happily ever after. Those are the, the statements. Then vague settings where you don't really know as a reader where the story took place. They just put up a backdrop setting in the story. Then we have stereo character, stere stereotyped characters, excuse me, where it says beautiful daughter, handsome prince, evil stepmother, weak father, and simpleton. Then the next characteristic is, is, is anthropomorphism is where human characteristics are given to animals, plants, or objects. Then in the next slide, we have another set of characteristics. We have cause and effect, where these relationships are quite apparent in traditional literature, where good characters prevail and are rewarded, and evil characters get their punishment, whether it be death or banishment. Then we have the happy ending for the hero, where the ending is always happy, everything's good, and as I said in, in one of the characteristics, happily ever after. Then the next one, 
magic accepted as normal, where magic is, is considered to be parts of a foundation in almost any stories, where it is accepted and it helps the good person. Then we have brief stories with simple and direct plots, where in this case, it was necessary for traditional tales to be brief and simple because, as I said earlier, these were told orally, so no one could have that much memory to remember a long story. And finally, we have repetition of actions and verbal patterns, where in this case, it is a repetition of certain phrases or words, as we can see in the picture on the right. This is a story about the gingerbread man, where he says, run, run, as fast as you can, you can't catch me, I'm the gingerbread man. That was a repetition throughout the whole story. Next, in the next slide, we have the themes of the traditional literature. These are the main themes. Triumph of good over evil, as we know, good prevails and evil doesn't. Evil always has a undying end. Trickery, the protagonist is successful, not because he is good, but because he is a clever deceiver. For example, Puss in Boots, if you haven't known, Puss in Boots is a trickster in that story. Hero's Quest, stories with the Hero's Quest theme feature protagonist who is on a long journey of fraught. Then we have Reversal of Fortune, in the Racks to Riches theme, a story usually begins with a down, downtrodden underdog character who becomes blessed with luck and good fortune. Small outwitting the big, quick wittiness rather than brawn makes the protagonist successful in stories. This is a theme where the small character or the little guy can defeat the big guy. Mm -hmm. And finally, we will go on to the next slide. We will where we will talk about myths. There you go. Running out of time. The, the folk tales are divided into different kinds of narrative literature in the oral tradition, and it conveys the legends, customs, superstition, and beliefs. So we can find different categories. The first of one is myths. Uh, myths deal with the religion's belief of past culture, and it was the earliest form of folklore. It provides an explanation for unexplainable events to offer interpretation of natural phenomena and other mystery of life as act of deities. Also, the plot of myth usually includes heroes and supernatural beings, including God who controls natural forces. The mythology of many cultures is lengthy and complex. One interesting fact is that myths were not intended for children because it is involved violent act such as murder, rope, and incest. Next. The next um, is fables, as saying as myth. It is also one of the earliest forms of, folk of folklore. They have an, in an essential purpose because they taught lesson about behavior. Also, they transmit culture values from one generation to the next. Uh, so they are, um, it means that they are allegorical. Fables appear to be simple, but children may need to have a discussion about it to understand the meaning of the moral of the story, of the fable. Uh, some characteristics, there are brief and simple narrative. The tone is didactic because the purpose was to instruct the listener often um, is a lesson on how to behave. The, uh, the characters are anthropomorphic animals, occasionally a human or even elements of nature. The setting is a rural area and is setting in past. Plots involve one event and the moral is often at the end of the story. Here we have two examples, the lion and the mouse and the hare and the tortoise. Next. And the, uh, the next is ballads and folk song. Uh, ballads were sung as writing as narrative poems. They are one of the newer front of traditional literature and they were developed in the Middle Ages in Europe. Uh, this is a thought that is interesting. Ballad is considered by many to be the most remarkable and beautiful art form that the full tradition of the world have developed by Coffin 1999. 
We have two examples, on McDonald had a farm and the arroz con leche, the, that is from um, Latin American. Uh, legends legends are unverifiable historical or biographical accounts that were told by professional poets whose function was to recite the great deeds of their cultural heroes. One of the most popular legends in the English uh, language is uh, King Arthur. Uh, some characteristics are uh, they are uh, they are ser setting historic times and focus on the lives of extraordinary humans and events, often with a kernel of truth. The truth it is distorted. Attributes of courage, uh, goodness, wisdom, or beauty are often highly exaggerated. A uh, legend differs from a myth by portraying a human hero rather than a god or goddess. And the last one is the legends are narrative. Next. Uh, the next uh, is told tales. Told tales emerge through the storytelling of ordinary people and the imagination of professional writers of Eastern newspaper and expensive novels and periodicals. Some characteristics are the tall tales are delivered with grand the assertion of unbelievable exploits uh, told with great exaggeration and, and hyperbole. Uh, that some is humorous with exaggerated feats of gigantic, extravagant, restless and flamboyant characters. Some of these tales describe the courage and endurance of real historical heroes and other heroes of tall tales are imaginary, a uh, composed character that embody and interpret, such as the cowboy Pecos Bill. Uh, what else? Native uh, American tales represent the folklore of the indigenous people in America, and the tall tales represent the folklore of the Euro American pioneers who set out to win uh, um, the continent. Next. Uh, fairy tales. Fairy tales constitute a wide variety of folk and narratives that express the wishes, hopes, desires, and fears of ordinary people. Some characteristics are most fairy tales do not have, uh, do not contain fairies. Uh, the, the protagonists are most frequently poor people in humble tradesmen. Through uh, they were they uh, there is a fairy share of royal supporting characters. The original purpose of most fairy tales was to enchant listeners with the stories of supernatural events in a wonderland setting filled with magic and strange, uh, fantastical characters. Um, there are seven major groups with recognizable uh, literary patterns. The first one is this story, also called animal stories, have anthropomorphic animals as characters. The animals' characters act, talk, and reason as humans do, though they may retain a few animal traits as well. The second one is tri trickster tales. The protagonist of trickster tales is often portrayed by an, an animal. He uses uh, his hits to gain some advantage of, or to get out of trouble. The next one is simpleton tales. The foolish protagonist in simpleton tales is humorously impractical. He is often portrayed as a like like able, um, childlike character without common sense. The next one is Porcoy uh, Tales. Porcoy means why. Porcoy Tales answer questions about the way things are, such as culture, customs, natural phenomena, and animal traits and characteristics. The next one is Cumulative Tales. In this tale, the same event repeats its itself with successfully uh, more characters or events added. Cumulative Tales uh, can have can have as a few as, as three repetitive events as in the three little pigs. Uh, the next is realistic tales. The realistic tales con concern characters, setting, and events that are realistic. And the last one is wonder stories. In these stories, characters include supernatural beings such as fair godmothers, mother helpful elves, and evil trolls. Uh, also, magical objects such as Mirrors, clocks, oil lamps, and rings are common. The plots of wonder stories center on common people who need supernatural assistance in order to solve their problems. Often these stories involve adventure, romance, and unusual characters. Yeah, um, sorry for the interruption, but the meeting was over. 
Now for the last piece of traditional literature, I am going to talk about nursery rhymes. Nursery rhymes are traditional rhymes intended for very young children. Often these rhymes are children's first contact with literature and most of these rhymes are nonsensical but they have several features that make them enjoyable. For example, their musical language and their often created strong rhythm. This makes them appealing to children. Uh, in addition, they contain humor, action and entertaining incidents. Among the subjects of nursery rhymes are festivals, vocations and courtship, also marriage and death. As you can see, these topics are more closely to adults' interests and that is because um, they were created with adults in mind for adult entertainment and not just for children, as it is true for all traditional literature. Most of nursery rhymes do not make sense today, but they have these historical links to their ori originating cultures. Many develop from humorous verses that were based on real people, events or customs. Now I want to talk a bit about this that you can see here, which is uh, this book called Mother Goose Nursery Rhymes. I want to talk about the name, because somebody could ask to himself or herself, why that name? Why Mother Goose Nursery Rhymes? Well, I'm going to explain you why. It is because in 1729 an English translation of Perrault's fairy, tale, uh, fairy Tales was published and became very popular in England and the book was subtitled Tales of My Mother Goose and it depicted an old woman like the one that you can see here of course this is not the original one with a caption that said Mother Goose's Tales so many people started to believe that this woman was Mrs. Goose and at that time also Mother Goose because Mother was added to the names of women as a sign of respect so that was for traditional rhymes and that was the last uh, piece of traditional literature. Now I want to talk a little bit about issues in traditional literature and the first issue has to do with violence and that's because critics have argued that traditional literature is too violent to share with children. I have some examples they could be Snow White's wicked stepmother that had to dance in red hot iron shoes until she fell down dead also we have the gingerbread boy that was eaten alive by a fox that's the one that you can see here <laughs> now the puss in boots killed other animals without mercy and threatened to chop the field workers into small pieces and some myths even contain events that include murder and rape and although i failed to mention this earlier in older versions of the frog prince, the frog was not kissed by the beautiful princess. He has uh, he was thrown against the wall, but he turned into a prince anyway. So we have such a controversy right there. But nevertheless, most of the popular tales have been adapted for younger younger children today. So that's not that uh, most of an issue anymore. Now for the last part of the summary of the reading we have in this case a summary of the summary and it is that all of them all the traditional literature as a whole myths fables ballads and folk songs legends tall tales fairy tales and traditional rhymes they all share uh, these characteristics they usually has these unknown authorships they were passed down orally from one generation to the next one before being written down and they have conventional introductions and conclusions, vague settings, stereotype characters, anthropomorphic figures, apparent cause and effect relationships, and happy endings for the heroes and heroines. And some of them, the ones that are that has musicality, um, the verbal patterns. Now that we learn about traditional literature we are going to see the piece of liter traditional literature we chose for the planning of the class. Correct. So as my classmate Jada mentioned, we will be using this piece of literature, which is the Ugly Duckling. As my classmate Carla mentioned, fables is a part of traditional literature. It is considered to be a subgenre, and the Ugly Duckling is a fable. 
So as we all know in the story, this is a story about a Nugly Duckling who is bullied for his or her appearance, where they, where he goes on and people, well in this case animals, treat him harshly. And at the end of the story, he becomes happy because he turns out that he is a goose and he is happy with his appearance and other animals think that he is beautiful. So now my classmate Jared will dive in deeper along with Karen and Christina about the lesson plan we have with this book. Mm -hmm. And as Jose mentioned, we are going to talk about the ugly duckling. As you saw, he was kind of bullied. So this uh, piece of literature could be very interesting for talking, for example, about bullying in the class and about respecting the others. So this is our planning for a class using the ugly duckling. The objectives of the plan are students will demonstrate family fami familiarity with the ugly duckling, students will identify the main farm animals, students will dis discuss the moral of the story, students will draw their favorite animal. This is for second grade. So now for the warm up, it is about what do we know? Uh, it means about previous knowledge. The exercise is um, warming up previous vocabulary by asking students, in this case, what they see in the image and then matching it with the word cat, hen, goose, duck, and swan. That are going to be the animals mentioned on the ugly duckling. So here you have um, examples of these flashcards. Here you can see the image of the cat and then the word, the image of the hand and then the word. And for the materials it is, or ma they are matching flashcards of cat, hand, goose, duck and so on. And the time expected for this exercise, since it is just a warm-up, is five minutes. Now uh, this is the part where we are going to watch, in this case, the ping pong's version of the ugly duckling. This is the link. And the exercise is just watching the fable. It is not, uh, it doesn't last more than five minutes. The materials, I wrote probably a video in. It could also be a big flat screen in that case. Or if the class is very little, it doesn't have to be that big. So it is not that long too, um, in this case, just five minutes, once again. The ugly ducklings, animals and more. Uh, the exercise in that part is a set of flashcards or farm, of farm animals will be shown on the board and a student will ask the question, what animal did you see on the video? And one animals did you not see on the video the materials this can be done on a powerpoint presentation or with physical flashcard of our animals uh, the fly the animals that can we include is cat hen goose duck swan pig sheep dog horse and co the activity uh, is going to be like 10 minutes approximately mm -hmm. and, uh, and and just for you to know as you can see five of, of the animals that we have here were shown in the video and and five of the animals uh, were not shown in the video so half and half and there's just uh, an image for illustration purposes but here you can see like the main topic in this case is going to be farm animals now another topic w that we will we'll be covering in this class has to do with bullying in, the ca in this case. So the exercise for this part titled The Ugly Duckling Was Sad is a little discussion about why the duckling was sad to emphasize the moral of the story, first one, and the second one talk about bullying in the classroom. So the duckling was sad when he was being, when he was not being respected by others so that's a good point to, to talk about bullying in classroom. For the materials, it could be just an image 
uh, whether it is digital or physical, of that scene where the duckling is being mocked by other animals. Uh, five minutes in intended in this case, and for illustration purposes again, that scene. Now, for the next part, which is the larger one, 20 minutes, it is called My Favorite Animal. And the exercise is that students will draw their favorite animals and present it to the class, asking the question, or in this case when being asked by the teacher, what is your favorite animal? And they will answer using the next sentence, my favorite animal is, and the name of the animal they draw. For the materials, of course, drawing materials, and as I said, 20 minutes. For the teacher, all of their dragons will be used to create a collage. This will be done by the teacher after the class that will be on the wall for the rest of, of the week. Yeah, so an um, incentive for the students in this case, their drawings will be on the wall, so if they drew a very nice drawing, they will be proud <laughs> of that, because that would be on the wall. Now, finally, for the wrap-up part, it is called My Mate's Favorite Animals, and the exercise is that the students will answer the following, what is, and then the name of a classmate, let's say for example Alexa, what is Alexa's favorite animal? And they are going to answer by saying Alexa's, in this case, favorite animal is, and then the name of the favorite animal, let's say, for example, elephant. Then the maid will show its drawing to see if it was true. And that's it for our presentation, that was traditional literature, so thanks for your attention. <laughs>